War is expensive. The development of weapons, vehicles, and even uniforms can amount to eye-watering bills. But some machines are so very pricey, we're surprised they didn't bankrupt entire countries. Is war really worth the cost? After watching this video, every accountant would argue for world peace. These are the 20 most expensive military machines ever built. Number 20, mine resistant, ambush protected. Mine resistant, ambush protected, or MRAP for short, is what the US military calls light tactical vehicles. These vehicles are made with the intent of withstanding an explosion, most likely an IED or improvised explosive device, which are generally used in surprise attacks. The MRAP program was started by the US Department of Defense as a result of consistent IED attacks during the Iraq war. The program officially began in 2007 and continued on until 2012. Vehicles like these were made before the MRAP program began. In fact, it was the Caspier Infantry Mobility Vehicle developed for South Africa that inspired the US Department of Defense to start the MRAP program. The program was the direct result of the loss of soldiers from IEDs in Iraq, and so the US had to make sure that there was enough quality steel to produce the vehicles for the army. There are three different MRAP classes which are divided by weight and size of the vehicle. By 2007, there was an order for 10,000 MRAPs from the Pentagon and each one cost over half a million dollars to make. In total, these MRAPs cost almost $50 billion to produce over the years, which was met with some serious criticism. Now it's time for the strange topic. You can always trust a Russian to push the potential of warfare. At present, the Russian military are experimenting on a wealth of things, but none more expensive than a helicopter tank hybrid they've been working on. Oddly, both the military and government have been very secretive and quiet about what they're spending, with separate accountants hired to track the finances on top of the usual team. There's only ever one reason why you won't admit how much you're spending on something because it's a lot. It's quite clear that when this thing is finally done, the reveal of this price will be stratospheric. Let's assume they only ever make one. In fact, let's hope. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag strange topic. Number 19, V-22 Osprey. The Bell Boeing V-22 Osprey is an impressively designed aircraft that can actually take up and land vertically. It is the best of both worlds as it combines the functions of a helicopter and the range and speed of a turboprop aircraft. The need for the V-22 Osprey came about after the failure of Operation Eagle Claw in 1980, wherein the military realized that there was need for such an aircraft, one that could take off and land vertically, while also being able to carry troops at high speed. So, the United States Department of Defense created a program where the design for the V-22 Osprey could later be created. Both Bell helicopter and Boeing helicopters were in charge of creating the final aircraft, this first iteration of the aircraft took flight in 1989, which marked the beginning for further testing and alterations. The V-22 Osprey was not without its faults. In fact, there were two fatal crashes in 2000 that 23 Marines, which prompted the military to stop using the V-22 until they could figure out what went wrong. The amount of money being spent on these aircrafts was also controversial as the budget for them went from $2.5 billion in 1986 to a whopping $27 billion by 2008. Apparently, each aircraft was about 110 million in the mid 2000s. Number 18, F 35 Lightning II. The F 35 Lightning II is made by Lockheed Martin together with the aid of Northrop Grumman and Bay Systems, and is another impressive aircraft that the US military has under their belt. The Lightning II is actually a single seat, single engine combat aircraft. Its technical use is for airstrikes and to take control of an enemy's airspace. Moreover, it can also engage in electronic warfare as it can control an electromagnetic spectrum to attack. It also tackles I-STAR or intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. While the aircraft is based off a previous Lockheed Martin craft as well as a Boeing craft, there are many countries besides the US that are interested in acquiring some of these aircraft. And a lot of the funding for the production and development came from NATO. The aircraft is impressive, that's for sure. It can take off as a normal aircraft would, but it can also perform a shorter takeoff and vertical landing. The first test of the Lightning II happened in September of 2006 and actually had its first flight not too long after in December of that same year. 
However, the tests and flights found that there were going to be a lot of redesigns and adjustments that would need to be made on an already costly piece of aircraft. The craft began to receive a lot of criticism as the costs continued to grow on the expensive machine. It also received some backlash regarding just how heavy it was. Its empty weight is 13,290 kilograms or 29,300 pounds. Despite all of the rising costs, the Lightning II is used all over in countries like the United Kingdom, Australia, Israel, Italy, Japan, Norway, Finland, Denmark, Canada, the Netherlands, and so many more now all have a certain number of these crafts in their fleet. Number 17, E-2 Hawkeye. Northrop Grumman's E-2 Hawkeye has been around since the late 1950s and early 1960s. They needed a replacement for the E-1 Tracer, so they made some changes to the radar and radio communications, as well as some other electronics in order to develop the E-2 Hawkeye. Its intent is to be a Tactical Airborne Early Warning Aircraft, or AEW. This essentially means the E-2 Hawkeye can detect other aircrafts and missiles using its radar. The E-2 Hawkeye also became known as the Hummer due to the unique humming sound that came from its turboprop engines. The need for the E-2 Hawkeye came about when the United States Navy expressed the need for an early warning aircraft. So in 1959, the design engineers at Northrop Grumman were chosen to carry out the designs and production. The Hawkeye is seen as a high-wing airplane that has a turboprop engine, one on each wing, equipped with a retractable tricycle landing gear. Since its first iteration, the aircraft has gone through many upgrades and changes, but it has been used by the Navy properly since April of 1964 and its first deployment in 1965. Since then, countries such as Egypt, France, Japan, Israel, Mexico, Singapore, Taiwan, and many more have added these aircrafts to their fleet. The aircrafts are certainly expensive, as Northrop Grumman's contracts for the production of the Hawkeye has increased immensely over the years. In 2013, their contract was $113.7 million. But by 2014, they were awarded a contract of a whopping $3.6 billion for more E-2 Hawkeyes. Number 16, B-2 Spirit. The stealth bomber, or the B-2 Spirit, made by Northrop Grumman is a heavy strategic bomber. The aircraft was produced from 1987 to 2000 and was made to drop conventional and thermonuclear weapons. The Advanced Technology Bomber, or the ATB, was a project that started when Jimmy Carter was President of the United States. The construction and design of the B-2 bomber was so promising that the production of the B-1A bomber was halted and all efforts were put into creating the B-2. However, as with any large undertaking in the construction of new warfare, there were many developmental difficulties that ultimately made the whole project cost a lot more. For only 21 B-2s, it cost $2.13 billion in the year 1997. This price included the development, engineering, testing, and the production of the B-2s. While the building of each one cost $737 million, the cost including the locating and producing of all parts needed made the cost of each craft come to $929 million. The costs for the B-2s became very controversial in the government as the Cold War was coming to an end, and the need for the B-2s was dwindling. The aircraft was an impressive design and engineering feat, as it could attack at altitudes of up to 50,000 feet, or 15,000 meters in the air. It first entered the military service in 1997 and was first used in the Kosovo War to drop conventional bombs in 1999. Number 15, Astute Class Submarine. The Astute Class is a class of nuclear-powered fleet submarines that are being constructed by Bay System submarines for the Royal Navy. There are seven boats that are included in this Astute Class fleet. The first one was launched in 2007. The Astute boat was first laid down in January of 2001 after overcoming design difficulties and was being built using modular construction methods. It was actually the first ever nuclear submarine to be designed using 3D computer technology. With the use of new technology and multiple challenges faced, the cost of production was severely underestimated. The whole program was actually three years late and over budget by hundreds of millions of pounds. Because of this, there was another 430 million pounds added to the existing budget of 250 million pounds. As well, the company General Dynamics was called in to help the production go smoother. Calling in GD was a good idea as they were able to fix multiple problems regarding software issues. In the end, the Astute class was 53 months late and 53% over budget. Number 14, USS Gerald R. Ford. 
The USS Gerald R. Ford is an aircraft carrier for the U.S. Navy that is named after the 38th President of the United States, Gerald Ford. Northrop Grumman began construction of the ship in 2005. The company actually held a ceremonial steel cut for a 15-ton plate to be used by the ship. By 2013, the ship had entered the fleet and replaced the USS Enterprise, which had been used for 51 years beforehand. But it was not until 2017 when the ship actually was delivered to the Navy and formally commissioned by President Donald Trump. The USS Gerald R. Ford is now the largest aircraft carrier in the world and even the largest warship that has ever been constructed in history. The contract with Northrop Grumman to produce the ship was $5.1 billion. The construction started and took place in Virginia. However, even before $5.1 billion was reached, Northrop Grumman had already been working on the ship using a $2.7 billion contract three years prior. Despite the already large sum of money given to the company to construct the ship, total cost of production was so much more by the time they were finished. In the end, it cost $13 billion to make. This makes it the most expensive warship ever made as well. The extra costs are due to issues with the nuclear propulsion system and munition elevators that needed to be fixed. Number 13, Super Hornet. The Boeing Super Hornet was an impressive and expensive aircraft that has been around since 1995, but will be taken out of production by Boeing in 2025. The Super Hornet is categorized as a twin-engine, carrier-capable, multi-role fighter plane, which has either a single or a twin seat. It can even carry air-to-air -air missiles and air-to-surface. The plane can carry up to five external fuel tanks and has a 20mm M61A2 rotary cannon. The place is a serious feat of engineering and destruction. It was first ordered by the Navy in 1992, but it took its first flight in 1995, followed by testing in 1996 and full production in 1997. After all that, it was finally approved in 2000. The Super Hornet is actually a whole 7,000 pounds or 3,200 kilograms larger than the original Hornet, but it also carries 33% more internal fuel, which gives it more endurance. It is even used in other countries such as Australia and Kuwait. Despite the huge undertaking, the Super Hornet actually met costs, schedule, and weight requirements. Because of this, the United States Navy considered the acquisition of the Upper Hornet a real success. Number 12, JLTV. The Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, or JLTV for short, is a program made by the United States Army, the United States Marine Corps, to replace the Humvee fleet. Lockheed Martin, General Tactical Vehicles and Base Systems were all awarded the budget and opportunity to continue the program and production of the JLTV. Their contracts were worth anywhere between $35.9 million and $45 million. By 2010, each company had created seven JLTV platforms to be tested and evaluated. By 2011, the development and manufacturing phase began. Each vehicle cost roughly anywhere between $230,000 to $270,000, not including the additional armor packages which cost $65,000. This phase of production was met with serious budget cuts and often with the threat of cancellation because of the rising costs and delays. Despite this, the vehicles were still ordered for the United States Army. In 2015, they placed a JLTV order for $243 million and varies every year following. For example, in 2016, an order was placed for $42 million, while in 2017, an order was placed for $177 million. Some of the largest orders were placed in 2018 at $803.9 million, 202 at $884.4 million, and 2021 at $591 million. The JLTVs were certainly making their money back tenfold. Even countries outside of the United States are interested in using or are already using JLTVs. These countries include Brazil, Montenegro, Romania, Slovenia, Lithuania, and many more. Number 11, Arleigh Burke DDG-51 Destroyer. The USS Arleigh Burke was named after Admiral Arleigh A. Burke, who was alive from 1901 to 1996. The ship is part of the Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyers. Prior to the Arleigh Burke, there was the Ticonderoga class guided missile cruisers. However, these ships were proving difficult to build and upgrade, so a new improved version came in the Arleigh class. It actually lowered its radar cross section, which made it easier to evade radar detection. The ship is made completely of steel, 
which bodes well for its protection and even allows for the ship to remain impervious to chemical, biological, or radiological materials. After the testing of the Arleigh Burke, it was first deployed to the Mediterranean and the Adriatic Sea by 1993. Many cruises followed in the coming years like 1995, 1998, 200, and 2001. By 2003, the Arleigh Burke was part of the Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom. The ship fired Tomahawk missiles in Iraq. It also aided in escorting out merchant ships through geographically difficult choke points. The ship has actually earned medals and honors over the years and time in service. By 2010, a project to upgrade the ship began in order to extend the life of the ships by 40 years. It is even be used in TV shows and films. Number 10, P-8A Poseidon. Boeing's P-8A Poseidon is a plane that needs a nine-person crew, which includes two pilots. It has anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare capabilities as a result of its next-generation sensors. The program to create the P-8A began in 2005, where the designs were firstling made. By 2009, the first flight tests were scheduled. It was intended that the P-8A would replace the P-3 Orion fleet. It is actually a militarized version of Boeing's popular 737 commercial plane. Unlike the commercial plane, this one contains torpedoes, cruise missiles, and mine propulsion, none of which belong in the overhead compartment on your commercial flight and definitely cannot be fitted under your seat for takeoff. This plane is kitted out with active multi-static and passive acoustic sensor systems, as well as electret, optical, infrared sensor, and something called a digital magnetic anomaly detector. The impressive plane also has two high-bypass CFM56 turbofan engines and an airspeed go 490 knots. Number 9, F-22 Raptor. The F-22 Raptor is made by prominent company Lockheed Martin. It is an impressive aircraft that includes a single-seat twin engines and is categorized as an all-weather stealth fighter aircraft. It's currently used by the United States Air Force. Its original intent was to be an air superiority fighter, an aircraft that can take control of enemy airspace, but it also engages in ground attacks and electronic warfare and signals intelligence. In tandem with Boeing, who created the wings, aft fuselage, and avionics integration, Lockheed Martin built the majority of the aircraft's frame and weapons system. It was designed to be really difficult to detect or even track by radar as the aircraft was able to reflect off-diffraction radio waves. The Raptor took its first flight in 1997, but was not formally introduced to military service till 2005. Initially, the United States Air Force had intended to purchase 750 of the F-22s, but actually only ended up buying 187 of them. This was because the cost of each aircraft was so high and the need for them at the time was not so great. The original program that set out to make 750 of the aircrafts cost $44.3 billion, and that does not include procurement, which costs an extra $26.2 billion. Since then, the ordering of the F-22s has dramatically decreased over the years as warfare changed in different countries, and there was a need for different machines to complete a variety of other tasks. The United States did actually ban the exporting of the F-22s, as there is apparently classified features and technology that was used to build and operate these aircrafts. Number 8. CH-53 King Stallion The CH-53 King Stallion's full title is the Sikorsky CH-53K King Stallion, but we'll call it the CH-53 for short. It is a heavy-lift cargo helicopter and was produced by Sikorsky Aircraft. The King Stallion is part of a long line in evolution of CH-53 helicopters. The CH-53s have been used since 1966. 200 helicopters cost the United States Marine Corps $25 billion. The newest version of the helicopter was ground tested in 2014. By 2018, it was finally delivered to the Marine Corps, and then in 2022, it passed the IOC, which meant that it was in its deployable form. The CH-53K underwent many design improvements, as it now has more lift capacity and better cockpit layout. It can even carry wider cargo now. It is operational in both the United States and Israel. A number of other countries have shown interest in the CH-35K, such as Japan. However, other countries such as Germany refused a CH-53K deal. It can carry 30 troops and has a takeoff weight of 88,000 pounds, or 39,916 kilograms, with external load. Number 7. Boeing C-17 Globemaster III 
The United States Air Force used the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III from the 1980s to the early 1990s. It was a military transport aircraft developed by McDonnell Douglas. It was based on the YC-15, which was of similar design, but definitely much smaller and was around during the 1970s. But the C-17 had more powerful engines and had newer swept wings. When the designing began, there were a lot of issues and already the company lost 1.5 billion despite being in the beginning stages. Apparently, the C-17 was below the 150% design limit load, coming in at 128%. It also struggled with buckling wings at the rear and the front. 100 million was then spent in order to redesign the craft and fix the issues. The C-17 was already a whole year behind schedule. Finally, it took its first flight and then entered the United States Air Force in 1995. While McDonnell Douglas merged with Boeing in 1997, the company did not stop producing the C-17 for 20 more years. In 2015, the C-17 took its final flight. The C-17 was flown in other countries as well, including the Royal Australian Air Force, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and the Indian Air Force, as well as Qatar, UAE, and Kuwait. Number six, VH-71 Kestrel. Lockheed Martin's VH-71 Kestrel was made in order to replace its predecessor, the United States Marine Corps Marine One. It is actually a presidential transport fleet. As is common with most military craft design, engineering, and production, the creation was delayed as there were many issues that were encountered. By 2007, the costs of the VH-71's development increased by 40%. It had even passed the projected amount of 4.2 billion that it was assumed to cost. The whole project actually cost a total of 11.2 billion. This meant that each helicopter in the fleet cost 400 million. The setbacks and spending almost cost the Lockheed Martin the entire operation as the Pentagon tried to terminate any further production of the VH-71. But this was overruled by the White House. Backlash was happening during Obama's presidency over the military spending to which he tried to rectify. He said that he thought there was nothing wrong with the helicopter he had at the time. Perhaps there were other powers that allowed Lockheed Martin to continue the project. Apparently, the cost of shutting down the operation and subsequently creating new helicopters would cost an additional 14 to 21 billion dollars, so that was clearly not an option. But testing finally began in the summer of 2007. Number 5. Virginia-class submarine The SSN-774 class, also known as the Virginia class, is a type of nuclear-powered cruise missile fast attack submarines. That's certainly a mouthful. <laughs> These submarines are the fastest and greatest of their kind and serve in the United States Navy. The submarines are designed by the company General Dynamics Electric Boat in tandem with Huntington Ingalls Industries. They were designed with the intent to engage in anti-submarine warfare and intelligence gathering operations. The United States Navy has big plans for the Virginia class as they will be acquired in 2043 and are projected to be used well into the 2070s. They are replacing the Los Angeles class submarines. It was actually the first United States Navy warship that was designed and developed using hashtag D visualization as well as conspirer-aided engineering, computer-aided design, and computer-aided manufacturing. I'm still curious about what conspirer-aided engineering might mean, but let's go with it. The design of the Virginia class took roughly 35 million hours to complete, while construction came to almost 9 million hours. Believe it or not, the Virginia class was actually a less expensive feat, costing 1.8 billion. In order to reduce the costs, the Virginia class uses a lot of components that are already made and considered commercial off the shelf. Despite 1.8 billion being a lot of money to spend, the alternative would have cost 2.8 billion. Number four, RQ-170 Sentinel. The RQ-170 Sentinel made by Lockheed Martin is nicknamed the Wraith. The Wraith is an unmanned aerial vehicle that is used in the United States Air Force. Apparently, the details of the Wraith are still under wraps, but there are many assumptions regarding the aircraft. For example, many believe that it is a stealth aircraft with aerial reconnaissance equipment. It has been used and deployed already to Afghanistan and South Korea in 2007 and 2009. Iran actually captured an RQ-170 in 2001, and images of the craft were released. It is said to have a flying wing design and a single engine of which there are many speculations as to what that engine is. Based on the title, the RQ, Q, R standing for reconnaissance and Q standing for unmanned, the Wraith is also said to not carry any weapons and is more so used for tactical operations. 
Everything known publicly about the Wraith is assumption, as the specs are still classified. But that did not stop people from speculating and coming up with their own artist renderings. The only footage ever seen of the Wraith is that of the Iranian video, which shows an unmanned United States aircraft. There are apparently 20 to 30 that have been built and can be used. Number 3. MiG-29 Fulcrum The Mikoyan, or MiG-29, was designed by the Soviet Union. As most of these expensive military machines have been built by the United States, this one takes a departure from that and was actually created to counter American crafts such as the F-15, made by McDonnell Douglas, and the F-16, made by General Dynamics. The MiG-29 officially started its service in the Soviet Air Force in 1983. The MiG can perform multiple different operations and use air-to-surface armaments and precision munitions. There have also been numerous variations of the MiG over the years, some of the later models include aerial refueling and infrared search track sensors, as well as glass cockpits and more fuel capacity. It has a swept wing and blended leading edge root extensions, or larxes. These larxes are swept at 40 degrees. As far as armament goes, it has a cannon on the port Wang route and has a 100 round magazine. Number two, Dassault Mirage 2000. The origins of the Dassault Mirage have been around since 1965. It is a French multi-role single-engine jet fighter and is made by Dassault Aviation. The real jet was designed in the 1970s for the French Air Force. It was constructed in Bordeaux, Martingas, and Bordeaux, Marignac. The first iteration took its first flight in March of 1978, and the second iteration took its first flight in September of 1978. The Mirage 2000 finally went into production in November of 1982. It uses the retractable landing gear it has twin nose wheels. It is also controlled by a fly-by-wire system. It can come as a single seat or a double seat and has flown in a number of other countries, such as Egypt, India, Peru, UAE, Greece, Taiwan, Qatar, and Brazil. Some more specs include its 17,000 kilogram takeoff weight, its 5.2 meter height, and 9.13 meter wingspan. It also has armament that includes guns, rockets, and missiles. Number one, Su-30. The Sukhoi Su-30 is a Russian aircraft that has a twin engine and two seats. It is categorized as a super maneuverable fighter aircraft that can withstand any sort of weather. The Su-30's predecessor was the Su-27, and while it was said to have a good range, it was still not enough for the Soviet Air Defense Forces. So the Su-30 took its place after a few different variations of the Su-27 were made. What makes the Su-30 so special is its integrated aerodynamic configuration, its unique way of taking off and landing, as well as its thrust vectoring control ability and how easily maneuverable it is. It also has a fly-by-wire system and has an autopilot feature that can be used at any flight stage, even at low altitude. It has been used in Russia, India, China, Malaysia, Venezuela, Algeria, Uganda, Angola, Vietnam, Kazakhstan, and many other countries. It has also been offered to Iran and Argentina. Which one of these machines do you think is the most dangerous? Have you heard of any other military weapons that cost a fortune to build? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.